Today I've got a problem from Oxford University's maths admissions test. This year I helped 10 students get offers from the University of Oxford and I'm looking to have more in the future. This is in fact only half of the problem. Um, we'll go through the other half as well, but I can only fit half of it on here. It's such a long problem. Let's get stuck in. In this question, we will write xy for a vector instead of the usual xy notation. So for example, 3 times 2, 1 just means 6, 3. This question is about vectors x, y, where x and y are whole numbers, and whether or not such vectors can be written in the form a times 5, comma 0, plus b times 0, comma 7, plus c uh, times 2, comma 1, where a, b, and c are whole numbers bigger than or equal to 0. We will consider the set S of vectors p, q, with p between 0 and 4, and q between 0 and 6, with p and q whole numbers. Then by considering the vectors x, y, x, y minus 2, 1, x, y minus 2 times 2, 1, and so on, up to x, y minus 34, times 2, 1, we will find condi conditions on x and y that imply x, y can be written in the form, uh, this form here, where a, b, and c are whole numbers greater than or equal to 0. So this is firstly quite interesting. They've given us a bit of a setup to the problem and given us a bit of background on, on what we can expect in the problem. But let's actually just dive into the actual calculation. So part one, we want to consider the set S of vectors p, q, with p between 0 and 4 and q between 0 and 6. How many vectors are there in S? This is pretty easy to work out. Well, there's five different choices for P, there's seven different choices for Q, and since they're independent, five times seven, that's 35. So 35 vectors in S. We want to explain why for any vector X, Y with X and Y whole numbers, we can find a whole number, whole numbers A and B, um, uh, and a vector V and S, such that X, Y equals A, five, zero, plus B, zero, seven, plus V. And this is just essentially division. So if x is any integer, for example, x can be written as um, 5a plus p, where p is a number between 0 and 4. And that's just how division works, right? x is going to have a residue, mod 5, um, and that number is p, and it's going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and similarly for y, y is going to equal uh, 7b plus uh uh, plus um, q here, where q is between 0 and 6, for a very similar reason. Um, so there's going to be some integers a and b that satisfy this. Okay, great. And then what, then the vector v here would literally just be whatever p, q is, and then you can just check that this equation here works. Okay, a nice little intro. Let's move into the harder parts of the problem. So for the rest of this question, we'll call such a vector v the residue of x, y, and we'll assume that the residue is uniquely defined for each vector x, y. So we know from the previous part we can write any vector in this form, and we're just calling v the residue. Part two, consider vectors x, y plus k times 2, 1, and x, y plus m times 2, 1, where k and m are whole numbers. We want to prove that if these vectors have the same residue, i.e. the same ve vector v, then k minus m is a multiple of 35. Well, this is actually quite straightforward to do. If they have the same residue, then that means that the first vector, x, y plus k times 2, 1, can be written in the form a times 5, 0, plus b times 0, 7, plus some vector v. And then this other vector, x, y plus m times 2, 1, is equal to c times 5, 0, plus d times 0, 7, plus v. And so therefore, if I just subtract both equations from one another, the xy's will cancel. I'll get k minus m times 2, 1 equals, and then a minus c um, is just some other constant, integer e, 5, 0. Um, b minus d, again, is going to be some integer, 0, 7. And then v's will cancel out. OK, so I get k minus m uh, times 2, 1 equals some constant e times 5, 0 plus f times 0, 7. So if I just look at this, expand this out, I get k minus m equals 5e. So looking at the top components, and if I look at the bottom components, I get k minus m equals 7f. So this tells me that k minus m is a multiple of 5, and it must be a multiple of 7. And since they're co-prime, I get that k minus m must be a multiple of 35. So it equals 35, say x, for some integer x. OK, great. Oh, I probably shouldn't use x here because it's not the same. Let's say 35z. Anyway, part b. Explain why the vectors x, y, x, y minus 2, 1, x, y minus 2 times 2, 1, and so on, all the way up to x, y minus 34 times 2, 1, all have different residues. This is a really nice question. We're going to kind of essentially make an observation that they've given us a list of 35 vectors. Now, we have those 35 vectors. Now, why must they have different residues? Well, we can just use part A. 
because if any of them did have the same residues, um, well, we, we know that they're all of the form like this, where K and M are whole numbers, so going from 0 to minus 34. If they did have the same residues, then I could deduce that, so each one of these is of the form x, y plus k, or minus k, 2, 1, or plus k, where k is between minus 34 and 0. So if two of the vectors of this form did have the same residue, so let's say that x, y plus k times 2, 1, and x, y plus m times 2, 1, imagine they did have the same residue, then from what we've just deduced, k minus m must be a multiple of 35. But if k and m are between minus 34 and 0, k minus m can't be a multiple of 35. Well, the only multiple of 35 it could be is 0. Because if you look at any two numbers in this interval, and you look at the difference between them, it, the difference is going to be some number between 0 and 34. And the only number in that range is uh, that's a multiple of uh, 35 is 0. But that would mean that, that k and m are the same, and so these two vectors are the same. So, of course, they'll have the same residue for the same vector. Um, so, in fact, no two of... The, so every single, like, pairwise, they're going to have distinct residues. And so we get part B. Part 3. Hence show that if x is at least 68 and y is at least 34, and x and y are whole numbers, then x, y can be written in the form a50 plus b07 plus c21, where a, b, and c are whole numbers bigger than or equal to 0. We're going to use the previous part, as is the case with most long math problems. Um, we're going to use the fact that we know that all of these numbers, or all of these vectors, I should say, have different residues. In particular, that's a list of 35 vectors. And since they all have different residues, v, and we know that v has to be a vector in a set of size 35. Remember, v here is of the form p, q, where p is between 0 and 4, and q is between uh, 6 and 0. And so what we can deduce is, therefore, there must be one of these vectors here, which has residue 0, 0. And we don't know what that vector is, um, but it's going to be x, y minus c times 2, 1, where c here is a positive uh, or non-negative integer. And we know that this is going to equal to a times 5, 0 plus b times 0, 7 plus the vector v, but we've chosen c such that the residue is 0, so plus 0, 0. And of course, that's nothing, so we can ignore that. And now just rearranging this, we get that x, y equals a times 5, 0, plus b times 0, 7, plus c times 2, 1, like so. And now you may ask, well, why? How, where did we use the fact that x is at least 68 and y is at least 34? Well, it's basically to force a and b here to be non-negative integers. Um, so we know that this vector here is c times 2, 1, and c is at most 34. So this is at most 68. 34. So therefore, there's th these guys must contribute like a positive or non-negative amount to the x and y component. Um, so a and b must be non-negative. Okay, part four, the final part here. A student claims if x and y are whole numbers with x and y positive and x plus y being at least 102, then x, y can be written in this form. A 5, 0 plus b 0, 7 plus c 2, 1, where uh, a and b are whole numbers greater than or equal to 0. Is the student's claim correct? Justify your answer. Now, you may think that it is correct, because if you do 68 plus 34, using these numbers here, you get 102. And so any vector that satisfies this will satisfy this. However, here it's a slightly weaker condition, because it doesn't insist that x and y you know, x has to be at least 68 and y has to be at least 34. So that begs the question, what if x or y is a really small number and the other one is just very big to compensate? And you can easily construct a counterexample here. Imagine x is, let's say, 101 and y is just 1. Or maybe I'll go the other way around. x is 1 and y is 101. So if we consider this vector here. Now let's try and write this in the form a times 5, 0 plus b times 0, 7 plus c times 2, 1. The issue is, if we just look at the top component, the top component is 1, so, which is strictly positive. So that means that one of these a or c has to be positive. But the moment one of them becomes positive, let's say a, you're already contributing 5 times a, which is going to be at least 5, because remember, a, b, and c here are positive integers. Similarly, if, if c is positive, you're going to be uh, con contributing at least 2. 
So one is too small for this. So you're not going to be able to find integers A or positive integers A, B, and C or non-negative integers A, B, and C that satisfy this. And so the student's claim is false. This is a really interesting problem. And I guess there, this can easily be extended to some other interesting number theory style problems. Um, but hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, do give this video a like and do subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.